the night before the DARPA Robotics Challenge, and all the teams, I, I'm quite sure, are going to be up pretty much most of the night. They're testing out their robots that are going to be competing and doing what to humans would be a very simple task, but robots are extremely challenging. So you can hear the noise behind me as the power packs that these things are tethered to. These are the Atlas robots, the Track B teams have been given to work with. So these guys are just programming, just coding. The, the Atlas robots, figuring out how to make them do these simple tasks like opening doors, climbing up stairs, and doing uh, rubble removal and stuff like that. I kill this process. This is the process that runs on the robot. This is the one that talks on the socket to you. Let me, uh, I'll actually direct your attention to this one. Uh, so this is uh, another, it will be the second of the, the Robosimians, but you can see that we have multiple stereo cameras, and there's another one set down here. Now these are the ones that we're using for this competition. Yeah. But the robot also is designed around having sets of cameras here, uh -huh. and you can just see down underneath there are more cameras here. So what that gets you, and you can kind of see as it comes around, is we're actually getting hemispherical stereo coverage. And so ultimately this type of robot will be able to see an entire plus of hemisphere in 3D. So th this always represents the live robot and like this one represents what you're intending to do. Right? So like you know if you were to you know move this, that's where you want to go and then you can ask for a plan that takes you from where you currently are to this future location and then it would give you that. Yeah, so I can kind of talk a little bit more about you know what, what the, the sort of design elements of the robot are. So obviously we've got a central body, um, and you know, the simian aspect of it is really about this generalization. Right? It's not an optimized design, it's a generalized design. So we have a, a relatively regular body. Um, they each, uh, around the body, Right, we have arranged these four limbs. The limbs are identical in, in every way, uh, with the exception of a couple of things. So we specialize only when we need to. Mm -hmm. I guess we have hands. Now, for the purposes of this contest, we haven't equipped it with four hands. Mm -hmm. In the ultimate form, it would, in fact, have a hand on every one of the limbs. And so that would make everything exactly the same. Um, also, we've for this contest, one of the nice things is uh, to simplify things. They've given us this very flat floor to work with. Right. And the best thing about a flat floor is wheels. So if we knew that we were going to be able to use the wheels, now we have uh, the wheels that we sit on and the ones we cast around on. Right. If we thought that we were going into uh, terrain that was just impassable by wheels, we would actually take those wheels off and we would take a camera set exactly like this and we put it on the back. And at that point, we're, we're symmetric front to back and side to side. And so we can move in any direction with the same amount of information and awareness and capability in terms of uh, manipulation and